Welcome back to the next part of the exploit development series. Last time we bypassed step using write process memory, though when trying to execute our shellcode with the exploit we created last time, it eventually broke since we didn't have write permissions in the code cave we utilized, which would be required by the decoder step that got prepended by msfvenom. So instead today we will learn about a new technique called rob based decoding, and this means we will write our very own encoder and decoder and integrate the decoder into our ROP chain itself, so that the decoding process takes place before the copying of write process memory. To get started, we first of all have to generate some shellcode. And this time, instead of using msfenom like the last times, I will use a Python script, since the shellcode generated by msfenom in this particular scenario is a bit buggy. Right here, I use shellcoder.py from EP052 to generate some custom shellcode, and we can see all the assembly instructions used for the reverse shell, and at the bottom we have the CPU opcodes that we can add to our script. Shellcoder.py also tells us that null bytes were found, so we have to encode a few bad characters in our shellcode to make it functional. After copying the shellcode into our Python script, the first thing we have to do is map the bad characters. We can either do that manually, which of course works fine, Though since we would have to do this every time we change the shellcode, we could also write some more Python code to automate this process. Right here we introduce the new function mapchars, which takes the shellcode as an argument, specifies all the bad characters for that binary or that memory region, and then iterates through the shellcode storing the position if the current character is indeed a bad character. The next thing we should do is encode our shellcode. Once again, we could either do that manually or automate the process, and to encode the shellcode we can use a very simple technique. Simply subtract one or two from the bad characters. So in the case of the null byte or 0a, they become ff or 09. And in the case of 26, we have to subtract two instead of one, since when subtracting one from 26, we get 25, which is still a bad character. What we can do now is once again introduce a new function that specifies the bad characters again, and the characters we will replace them with. So 00, 0 becomes ff, 0a becomes 09, 0d, 0c, etc. Then we iterate through the shellcode and replace all the bad characters with their matching encoded values. Afterwards we simply return the encoded shellcode and that's it. The final thing, more or less, we have to do is writing the decoding routine. And to do this, we need a pointer to our encoded shellcode in memory on the stack, and this pointer can be obtained by simply placing the decoding routine between the patching of the LP buffer argument and the end size argument. At this point right here, EAX points to our shellcode, so from now on we can use EAX as our pointer to the bad characters. Some things we have to keep in mind are that first of all the offset to our shellcode on the stack, which would be this one right here, changes every time our ROP chain changes, so we have to adjust it as well. And that we shouldn't use EDX during the decoding routine, or if we have to use EDX, save its current value, which is the pointer to the ROP skeleton, somewhere else, and then restore it afterwards. So the two things we do here are first of all obtaining the positions of the bad characters using the mapchars function and the shellcode. And then we simply say that we want to add something to our ROP chain, and this something will be returned by the decode function, which takes the positions of the bad characters and the shellcode as arguments. Finally, we can write the last function that is required, which would be the decode function. Again, takes the positions and the shellcode as the arguments, and the first thing we want to do is introduce some new variables. We want to specify the bad characters again, then the so-called decode bytes, or whatever you want to name them. In my case, it's mostly hex 1. Again, ff plus 1 becomes 00, 09 plus 1 becomes 0a, and for 25, 26, I'm using 2 instead of 1. Next, we have to iterate through the positions, and if we are working with the first position, so if i equals 0, we say that the offset is simply the position at index i. Otherwise, we say that the offset is the position at index i minus the position at index i minus 1. 
This is because we want to move the pointer from the beginning of the shellcode to the first bad character, to the second, to the third. So we don't need the offset from the beginning every time, but from the beginning, then from the first bad character, then from the second, and so on. We then want to negate the offset and perform a logical end operation to get rid of null bytes. And since we are going to use a subtract gadget later on, we need the negative one after all. To do this, we say that the offset equals the negative offset, logical and hex all Fs. Next, we want to once again iterate through our shellcode using the positions and the bad characters array. And to do this, we use a second loop and say that we want to iterate through the length of the bad characters. And if the character at position i equals a bad character at position j, we say that the value equals the decode bytes at position j again with a logical OR operation with hex 1111100. This is because we will only use the lower 8 bytes of EAX later on, so AL, and this means we have to make all the other bytes non-zero. Finally, we can start to write the partial ROP chain, or the decoding routine itself, and if you don't yet know how to obtain ROP gadgets, just go back to my previous articles or videos to check out how to use RP++. So what we want to do is append to the stub variable using the pack function. And the first gadget we want to use is at this address, which would be a pop ebp return gadget. The thing we want to pop into ebp is the offset to the first or to the next bad character. Then we want to subtract that offset from the current pointer that we have to the shellcode. So the gadget we use right here is a sub EAX EBP. And then we have some more prop instructions that simply come with the gadget. So here we subtract the negative offset from EAX. EAX is the current pointer to our shellcode. And this means that we essentially add the positive offset to EAX, aligning the pointer with the bad characters. Since we have three pop instructions, we can fill them with some characters, for example, 12 A's, and then we can proceed with the decoding routine. The next thing we want to do is exchange EAX with ECX, because we will need those two registers the other way around in just a moment, which also means that we can restore them later on. And after exchanging them, so EAX is now in ECX and the other way around, we can pop something into EAX. The thing we want to pop into EAX would be the value we then add to the bad character. Finally, we add this value to the character to decode it again and restore the original byte. The add byte ECX AL instructions is used to add the lower subregister to the dereferenced ECX. Basically, that's all you have to do, though of course it fully depends on the gadgets you have on your disposal. The last thing we have to do is return stub, which will then get added to our ROP chain down here. And then we say that the encoded shellcode is encode, shellcode, and we replace the shellcode with the encoded one down here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have to adjust the offset to our shellcode. And to do that, we go to the and al hex ad instruction, take the address, and place a breakpoint at it. So we go to WinDebug, place the breakpoint, and continue the execution of SyncBreeze, and afterwards we can execute our Python script. Right here we can see that WinDebug was unable to insert the breakpoint. This is because if we take a look at the module libspp, it got rebased this time which sometimes happens, so in this case just use Q to kill the process, go to services and start it again. Afterwards we can try the same again and execute our exploit a second time. After hitting the breakpoint we can use G, which will continue the execution, to the second occurrence of the gadget since we used that gadget twice. And then we can step to the push ESP instruction. The next thing we want to do is calculate the offset from the current ESP to our shellcode on the stack. And to do that, we look for a certain byte sequence in the user mode space. So we simply look for the first few bytes of our shellcode.
And we can see that we got multiple occurrences of our shellcode in memory. The closest one to ESP would be this one, but you should of course always double check if they are all reliant and working fine, because they might either be not stable or the shellcode might be mangled. But after some testing with this binary, I can assure that the closest one is working fine. What we can do is take that address and calculate the offset from ESP to that address, which would be minus 252. So we take that value right here, go to the offset in our Python script, which is here, and replace it. Now, since we already popped the previous offset into the EAX register, we can simply take the address once again and continue the execution to the at EAX EBP instruction. And then simply replace EAX with the actual new address. At the pop EBP instruction, we enter the decoding routine of our ROP chain. And we can see that after the sub EAX EBP instruction, if we take a look at EAX, we point to a 0C byte, which if we add 1 to it would be a 0D, so it would be a bad character. This means that we most likely got the pointer alignment right. After the add byte pointer ECX AL instruction, we can once again check the byte, this time using ECX instead of EAX, and we can see that it got indeed decoded to hex 0D. We could step through the entire decoding process to verify that everything is working correctly, and if you encounter any problems, that is also indeed the thing you should do. But for now, we can simply quit the process, go to services, and start SyncBreeze Enterprise. And if we want to attach it to Windybug again to check if libspp got loaded correctly, which it did. Then we can resume the execution and switch to our Kali Linux VM. In the terminal, we start a listener on port 443, and then we can run our exploit once again. Going back to the terminal, we can see that we successfully popped a shell, which means that the decoding worked correctly, the dev bypass with write process memory worked correctly, and we successfully executed our shellcode, so we gained code execution on the victim host. That's it for this video of the exploit development series, and I hope to catch you again in the next part.